The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman on this 15th day, middle of November, Wednesday, uh, 15th of November. We're looking at the Dow up 82, 34,910. So this is the area that I'm expecting. There's going to be some resistance, but it's only a leg B. Remember, in the Chapman Wave methodology, maybe I'll just do this. It's worth doing that. No. Try to identify the uh, lowest low bar. And then you start a wave count. And the wave count says, if there's a move off the bottom, there's certain techniques that we look at to see if it goes from a buy signal and, and then how it gets upgraded to a buy mode. It goes to peak A and then it pulls back and it doesn't break the left side low and then makes a new uh, recovery high. One penny above that peak A, that starts a new leg B. I'm going to show you this right now because we've got this exact thing going on in the... Um, Ten, one minute chart, look, peak A, peak B, and it went, the E mini went 25 cents, more, it goes in 25 cent increments above that. And one of the reasons I was looking at it and liking it is that the night period moving average crossed positive. So this is now a leg C. All right. Um, but the week, the weekly, I always like to look at the daily, weekly, monthly. It's not, it's one minute, five minute, 10 minute. The uh, five minute is still working very hard. And look what happened on that big spike. At 9.30, it went to a peak D. It made that arch formation, went above the 200-period moving average, and went below the 200-period moving average, took out the left side low, and now starting a brand-new buy signal because the stochastic's at 85%. It gets upgraded to a buy mode. But look at the 200-period moving average how, every, as it starts to get some kind of resistance. The further it breaks away, the quicker we can look at the left side high, 45.30, um, and see if it can make a cup formation. I don't want to do that right now. I just wanted to show you how the Chapman Wave methodology works. So this is a leg B in the daily chart. Very strong. The 9 is over the 14. The uh, price is way over the 9. The MACD is very strong. The histogram is still expanding. That's the distance between the green line and the red line. The stochastic's flat. I love when it goes it goes to 80% and fails. That's what you can get. But when it goes to 80% and holds and it moves to 95%, I love that. That's a daily chart. The on-balance volume is becoming a little bit overboard, but it isn't really overboard just yet. And we'll talk about the weekly chart. Let's rather do the same thing with the S&P. S&P is also in a leg B to the upside. Not just one, but a whole bunch of gaps to the upside. So I had a whole discussion the other day about the gaps. You've got to go one gap at a time. You can't look at the lower gap and say, oh, my God, 4,200. We're going back to 4,200 because of the gap. No, a gap is just one little icon. Look, the um, inside track propellant zone, That's to me, that's a way more important icon than any any gap. So if you start to take out 4450 in the S&P over the next, say, three sessions, let's say going to Monday, then I say, oh, now you've got to look at the nine-period moving average, which is just above the inside track propellant zone. Uh, and that's how we do it. And then you take that out. Now I'm going to start looking at this, the second gap down below. So that's the way I look at gaps. It's just another icon. It's just another way of looking at There's no rule that says a gap has to be filled. Almost all gaps to the upside eventually get filled. Not all, but a lot of them towards the upper part of the range get filled. But everything else gets filled when the tide changes. Okay, with that said, S&P is very strong. The weekly chart broke the Chapman falling axe formation. The falling axe formation is, uh, oh, I didn't finish that. So one penny above, in this case, is 25 cents for the E-mini, but one penny above A starts a floating letter B. When it makes a peak, in other words, the, the high, following bar has a lower high that makes a peak. And it becomes a peak B. And then this becomes peak B all the way down until it starts a new leg up by going one penny above B, and then it's a floating letter C. A buy signal gets upgraded to a buy mode with the implication that it should go to at least four higher peaks. So on the bullish side, the Dow, the S&P, the Qs, um, I'll go to the IWM in a moment, they should all make at least four higher peaks. 
how they do it and when they do it, that's a different set of uh, parameters that we look at. So within that context, the next thing I want to look at here is the uh, Chapman Wave Falling Axe Formation because we've just broken out of that on the upside for the S&P in the daily. This is a pattern that says you make a high, then you make lower highs and much lower lows. And all of a sudden it forms a base and that base can take you if it breaks the downtrend line, the one to one to the upside. Let's see what's happening here. So we've got the S&P, the falling axe formation, uh, broken the daily, it's broken in the weekly. Is it going to do a one to one? There again, I go step by step. For the L means that the nine period moving average has finally gone above the uh, black. The pink will change to green when it goes above the black, but it's a weekly chart. I can't do anything until about it until Friday at four o'clock. Probably by Thursday, I'll be able to say, yep, it's green is hardly likely to go back to uh, pink. But I'm not saying that right now. And look at the weekly chart, monthly chart. Look at the monthly chart. Let me move this. I like to get the trend line as accurate as possible. That would be the accuracy. So it's just sneaking its head above. There's the S&P monthly chart. In almost like a cup and ladle, a cup and handle pattern, but let's we won't go there just yet. But the technicals are still quite strong in the monthly chart. QQQ, this is what was very important. How does the QQQ continue higher uh, in this leg B when in fact it is just? Uh, let me just go through this again. The, oops, there it is. Okay, the, the high that was made. Right here, back on the in July was three eight seven point. It's getting a little covered there. Ninety eight, three eight seven point ninety eight. <clears throat> the high today is so far three eight seven point sixty five. Would you say that's close? Wow, is that close? I mean, just an eye blink away from making a new recovery high, and that will start a leg B in the monthly chart. <laughs> And we've got a G already, which is not even a G slash C because it already took that out. Yeah, so that's so far that's very good action. Um, I want you to just do the SMHs. SMHs are, mm, I hit the wrong chart. Oh, I hope I didn't mess that up. Ew. You never know, right? SMH, uh, very strong leg C. Um, 161.17 was the all time high. We're already at 162.23. That's now a leg C in the monthly chart. Very positive. All right. Um, we have we have covered. We're not in any short positions at this particular point. Now, the other thing that's also very important in terms of looking at um, the different indices is to say the laggard, the very big laggard, was the IWM. So where's the IWM right now? <clears throat> It is testing. Excuse me, just got to liquidate the uh, throat. It is testing the 200 period exponential moving average in leg B. That is really important. Why? Because once it clears this whole mess on the decline in October and it's closing this gap, which is here right now, all of a sudden, you're looking at the parameters that say, hey, now the targets could be the 185, 183 to 185, and then maybe even the 190 level that was a high back in September. So this is a very important moment. And what I said yesterday is I wanted to see a broadening out of this rally. Now we've got the broadening out. I'll be back in a moment. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. One minute chart again. Look, yeah, Chapway methodology, it cross positive. Magnes good stochastics now way over 80% and 92%. And what did it do? It went peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, and now we're in leg E. And it just took out the left side high. And that was the high of uh, 9.40 this morning, that Eastern time at 45, 38.50. <clears throat> so with that said, um, let's just get back to our story here because we want to look at <clears throat> what would happen if the IWM, which is the Russell 2000, what would it take for the weekly chart <clears throat> to become extremely bullish? Number one is it needs to close decisively above this 200 period moving average in the weekly chart of 181.33. It's a very close. It's a 180.93 right now, but it has to close above it. And then it has to start to see the 9 period moving average, which is just horrible. It's way pink uh, below the 14 period moving average. Eventually, so this, in fact, needs to be gray. I can't make this blue, meaning that I've got a buy signal. My eye might say, hey, this is really going to go to a buy signal. But the technicals say, you got to wait. So I'm looking at this and thinking um, that histogram of the MACD in the weekly chart needs a lot of work to get positive for the nine to uh, cross over the uh, black so the, for the green to cross over the red, there's an nine period called differential. Uh oh, did I just lose sound? Why would it do that? Uh, and I, I need to know that I'm still being heard. So can someone, I, actually, I won't be able to hear anything. Uh, so I'm going to just do this because I know I, from the thing that I heard, uh, oh, now it's all back. Okay, everything's back. I don't know if I'm back. All good. Okay. Um, I, my, I guess maybe it's trade station just shut down for a moment. Gee, I don't know what's happening lately. Um, to, um, I don't know if it's my internet connection or whatever. It used to be so good. All right. So now we're back. And what I wanted to say is IWM is so important that you get this. Look, ARKK, I was asked about this yesterday. ARKK is actually acting very nicely today. It's up $1.36. Um, and this is the ARK Innovation. And within the, the sector of the IWM, the small caps and ARKK are 
ARK Innovation, the ARKK is a symbol, up $1.38 at $43.33. I see it subscribes. We've got a bunch of things that are on our list that on the next big pullback, we want to be entering it. Now, there might be too many, but I want to, there, there are positions that are just starting to take off right now. And that to me is really important. Why? It, because if I can get that rotation that says, and Microsoft, for me, is kind of the clue. That's what I said when we went long on that Tuesday M MSFT, um, uh, two days after the law Friday, and I called it a kind of a benchmark for both the Dow, the Going to slow down is its game. It's been fantastic. Is it an alternate count? I don't know if you really care if it's an F or a C. If it's an F, yes, it's going to pull back. But the technicals are so strong that at 370 today, it hit 370, 313. It could pull back all the way to the 362, 360 area, which I would love especially with the cup formation in the uh, weekly chart. But it's telling me that the, the big caps, and let's just go to Meta. Look, same thing. Meta, a little bit of a red candle. Um, it's made a new high in leg C. Let's go to Googie. Goog. There we go. Goog. Slowing down. Uh, pull back from that, a day's high. It's a 136 down, uh, up 56. Look at Apple. Apple's still holding, but look how the candles are getting a little bit smaller, and it is in leg D. So I'm suspecting that we could see some kind of a breather take place in these really fantastic, mega, magnificent sevens. And while it does that, you will get some kind of filler that, you know, I always, I, I don't know if Al can do this, show me right now. you got the scales of justice, and what happens is that one, uh, one weight starts to move higher and the other one goes down. Well, I'm thinking this is the, uh, the kind of the big caps. Maybe they take a bit of a breather as the small caps come. They don't have to take a big, just store a little bit so money can filter into the small caps. And that's really what I'm thinking. That to me would be a sustainable thing. So I need to just finish this up because I've got questions rolling in here. Look at the US, this is bonds. Uh, down uh, over a point at 140, but a very nice takeoff. This is leg D, and at 115.23, uh, 30 seconds, it went 115.20, exactly the same high as yesterday so far. Weekly chart is just improving in price, but the technicals, the MACD, the histograms about to turn positive. Stochastic still weak at 28%, and you've got the um, unbalanced volume in the weekly chart moving up. So it's good that we've got the bonds moving, but I I don't think this is it, that the bonds are now going to scream to the upside and everything's great in Toll Brothers trading right now up at a new, a new all-time high, as we know, just about yesterday, they did an all-time high at 86.69, breakout in the weekly chart, monthly chart, gone to a leg, an alternate count. Uh, you know, I have to call that a D and E, uh, an F. Yeah, so it's an all-time high. And it just Lenar, let's see the same thing here. Lenar hasn't made an all-time high, but it's already close. So to me, the excitement that's come about over the last couple of days, well, I would have to say the last week of trading, <clears throat> is fabulous. But I'm suspecting, and I don't think the VIX is going to tell us all that much at this particular point. It's way down, 14.03. hasn't taken out the 12.68 low <clears throat> that it made in September. But it did make a peak D at 23.08. Talking about the peak D, remember the chat wave, the, the objective is to go from a buy signal to a buy mode to get you at least to a D. D's where other things can happen. Look at the TBT. TBT went to a D pulls back, goes to an E, and then spikes up to this F as the technicals are failing. So what's happening is made this arch formation. This is the ultra short Lehman 20-year Treasury bond ETF. <clears throat> it filled that gap, but it, it, the gaps are not that important when I'm tra looking at something that trades during overnight hours, um, especially bonds uh, or the dollar or anything like that, or gold. So this is uh, the 36.73 low of the 22nd of September. If we start to take that out, then I think the TLT could go quite a bit higher. But at this particular point, this is a really good move, but it's not fantastic. In bonds, let's go to gold. Wow, there's a lot to do. The gold pulled back from the high of yes uh, this, this morning at 1979. 
1962 is down four. Uh, peak A in the weekly chart. We have not. I said to subscribers, we're looking to see whether or not we want to go long gold. I'm still very suspicious. And even the, the dollar smashing like this. Look, the dollar gets crunched down to the 200 period moving average of 104 when it was at 107.35 a month ago, just over a month ago, uh, October the 3rd. And the weekly chart the nine is still way over the 14. Anything can happen here, but I suspect that the dollar has made a high. It might be the high in the daily chart. I don't know if it's the high in the weekly because that weekly chart is still holding really well. But uh, it's just been in a big sideways consolidation for most of the year between 107 and 100 and, uh, and just uh, under 100. I'll be back. Dow's up 156. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Right, well, let me go to, uh, so wait, I didn't finish that. So what, what we've got is just got a peak F in the one minute chart. Now it's pulling back, but the nine is still over the 14. MACD's turned down. This is the one-minute chart, and you've got this big pop-up here. I wonder if I could do a little fib uh, thing. I was watching Larry's uh, uh, terrific uh, webinar just a moment ago, uh, and he loves these. 
Let me just see what you got. I always put this in, but it didn't get a little messy. Oh, it went right to the uh, 764 uh, retracement. Now it's pulling back. We'll see what happens. Okay. So within the context of the different things we were looking at, I wanted to just go through this, say, look, the dollar is at a smash to the downside. It's a nice session so far to have 39 ticks and 104.48 above the 200 period moving average. But wow. And look at this peak E in the euro dollar right there. Uh, let me move that up. I, I always do these by hand. By now, I, I should be able to have it automated, but when you get alternate counts, it changes everything. And the alternate counts for me are the most important aspect um, of the whole thing of the Chapman Wave. I am close to finding out when that particular uh, technique can be overruled, and that's going to be very important. And look at the USD. So the Euro, the Euro, is, the Euro is down uh, 0.108. 484 uh, down just a fraction and the USD JPY the yen is trading at um, 151.11 made a peak E and right there you remember the dollar yen re relationship had it so that this currency pair went right to the left side high oh I should have typed it in but I don't like it because it gets smoothed out 151.94 back in October, the week of October the 21st, 2022, 151.941. And so far, we've made a high of 151.90. Uh, uh, so isn't that amazing? And this is the left side, right side price time. It went right to the month. We'll see if it's going to hold. So as we're looking at this now, I suspect that we're getting this little choppiness uh, and we, that's going to be reflected in the market overall. Just want you to say, look, silver um, went into this trend line resistance right here. I have to do it that way. Um, so it's still within a downtrend, but it had a nice move to the 200 period moving average. Now it's pulling back up 31 cents. I just want to finish with gold again. Uh, down just three. It's holding quite well. Now I also want to look at high-grade copper. All right, with that, now I've got a question, a couple of questions that have come in. Let me just do that. Oops, I missed it. I'm in the wrong place. Okay, so I'm looking at this, and I'm going to say to you that within the context of everything we're looking at, some very small cap stocks have started to move. I'm just going to write down as I see these things. Uh, WCLD, uh, where was the one earlier on? Uh, ENVX, yep, ENVX. Uh, VX. Next question was uh, right here. Okay, I've got that. I've got that. Okay. Ah, there it is. Okay. ARKF. <laughs> Gee, well, a lot of questions. ARKF, I better get to them right away. But I need to scroll down so that I can see the one that I forgot to write down. CV something. Else. CVM, was it? I think it was CVM. Okay. I can't find it now. I need to get back to the charts. Uh, I think it was CVM. Let me see if I've got CVM up here. Let's go. Okay, and TGB. Yep. Oh, those are all great questions. What have we got in the YouTube? Uh, YouTube, I don't see anything there. All right, so here we go. High-grade copper is having a nice session today, but wow, it is way down to the lows. So this is just the start of a move to the upside. We'll see. But uh, CVM was my first question. So CVM, yeah. So you remember we looked at this a long time ago, uh, quite a few weeks ago, and what I was saying is, uh, I think we were right there, and we had a huge move to the upside um, on the 23rd of October in CEL dash SCI core sell ski or sky. I think it's a science, uh, and I'm probably done. So maybe it's something to do with biotech. I'm not sure. So it hit 2.11. Uh, is that 11 or 31? <laughs> yeah, 2.31. Right there. 2.31. And the question came in just a couple of days later. And I it was over here. And what I said is I'm going to draw this in because it's the, the it, it has almost like the, the longest, one of the longest uh, Chapman Wave Roman can inverted Roman candles I've seen in quite a long time. Um, and if at any point it starts to trade for about 60 to 90 minutes above 1.86, that's going to be very positive. If it fails to do that in the next two days, be careful because you could get to the, test the 140s. 
Well, the next day, uh, oh, this is what I got asked about. So I put in an up arrow saying above that level is very positive, holding it for about 60 to 90 minutes, and below that level is not. You see the up arrow and the down arrow? So look what happened. The next day it went above, but it couldn't hold, but it went above. The next day it not only went above, but it went to the 200 period moving average. Then what happened is it broke to a new recovery high, above 231. But this cannot be leg A, because the low... The bar that makes the low can also make the high. You have to wait for a trough before you start your wave count um, to the upside or downside. So, the, uh, or the upside, sorry. So we had to wait after this. Any bar after the low of one point oh four, I think. Yeah, one point oh four. That starts um, a trough, and then you can use your wave count. So there, this little thing right here, that's peak A, gray A. So this wasn't A. You cannot make this A. That cannot be the high. You have to wait for a trough. Now I can start A, and there's B, and now it's not a gray B. It's a, it's a blue, meaning it's in a buy mode because the stochastic's already at 87%. If it starts quickly to go back under 80%, that could fail. But look what happens. It pulls back, pulls back, and then it goes to a leg C and continues to a leg C today. So I like this very much. And the question is, basically, how high can it go? If I was, I, 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 I don't know if you've updated. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know if you've updated the, to tell me what it does. I think it kind of, it looks biotechish. The way they have the spikes in the weekly chart that fail with the long legs, just a shadow. That's why it's called shadow. This so far is 1.08. This is lower. One point. So this is the bar, 1.05, 1.04. So this is only A, right there, gray A, right? And it's gray because stochastic's only at 56% and a lot of work needs to be done. So the question is how high? And all I can say is what I normally would do is First of all, my eye, I, I don't necessarily know if I would actually print it up. I'd grab my rectangle formation uh, toolbar, and i just put that in and say, hey, when it starts to trade above this high, and if it can tag that high, so if it can trade, just close. I prefer close, but if it trades above 333, that's the high of the week of the 10th of March, then I would immediately look at the left side high of Three, um, 362 in November and uh, three uh, earlier in November was 368. Then I'd start to look at those. And I'd only go one step at a time because a lot of work needs to be done. But so far, the data is really positive. And I would say 260 to 241 would be really good support if there was a pull. Hope that helps you. We'll be moving on to others. Uh, down up 132, S&P up 19. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence.
Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Question about XLE. Is it a thing? Is it a short for me? Is it a short in this environment? We've been on the short side for so many months. Uh, I, well, we have. I, I personally, you know, we, for subscribers, we've been doing shorting. But also, is that done now? Are, are we really looking at higher highs? Therefore, even the worst, unless they, in the absolute, unless they are an inverse, maybe even a sector. I don't mean inverse in the sense that the DOG is the, is the short side of the DIA, the diamonds, alongside DOG one-to-one -one short. The, the, the Dow. I don't mean that. I mean, is it a sector that as markets go up, that sector always does badly because it needs the markets to go down? That, that could be even the um, uh, XLF, XLP, XLP, which is the... Um, S&P Select Consumer Staples Spider, but even that's moving very nicely. So I, I'm i having a difficult time, and it's been a few days now people have asked me about the um, energy sector. This is the XLE S&P Select Energy Spider Fund, made an all-time high of 94 uh, back in September of 2022. But basically, it's been in a sideways move. It went uh, slightly, uh, pulled back sharply to the 14 period moving average. They ran back up to test that high, and then it went sideways. I don't – ExxonMobil? Yeah, it's been a terrible, terrible shorter term. But look at the monthly chart. It's just been in this rectangle. And you remember rectangles can last quite a while. Remember the dollar was in – look, the dollar was in a, a, a sideways move for quite a while. Then it had this high of 107.35 on October the 3rd. Retested at 107.11 on November the 1st, a month later. But you remember, I pointed out that the technicals are really weakening, but the nine period moving average, like the Dow, when it finally made that uh, top, we were waiting, waiting. That, that on bounce one gave the exact high uh, back the 1st of August. And then we had to wait 11 sessions or something before the nine period moving average turned down. And then it turned down for quite a while. So what I'm looking at here is that the dollar is saying to me it is vulnerable, but it was going sideways and it was making lower lows and lower highs. When you look, I'm just talking patterns now because that's that's what this is all about. If you look at the XLE, the monthly chart has done almost the same kind of thing. The technicals on the right side for this last high in the 90, uh, just under 94, back in September. We are still, look, the nine period moving average is still very strong in the monthly chart. But this week, from last week into this week, there's an S. And that says finally the nine period moving average is weak and therefore it could start to move lower, but maybe test 81. So when the question comes up, is it a short? 
for me, a short in something like this, like the XLE, I don't think three points or five points is really worth it because it could easily, like a couple of the last couple of days, it could easily have a pretty good bounce, even if it's making lower lows and lower highs. Depends on your perspective. But all I can say is that at the 200 period moving average right now, um, at, at 85, 63, slightly above it, uh, I just don't see it. I just don't see it. And now, what I would say is, I, I, and I don't think you play a question that doesn't play option, play, use options at all. If you did use options, then I'd say, you know what? Get in December, third week of December, third Friday of December, that's the 21st of December, get a put option, uh, and I'd get it slightly out the money, 85, 86, 64. If you can get it at 84, I'd say that's what why I would play it. I would not risk much at all. Now, I'm going to say, I don't see a short. I see it pulling back. I don't see like the move from 93 to 83, that's 10 points. To get another 10 points, I think there are enough energy stocks that should benefit. Look, crude oil is pulling back uh, sharply, um, but it's, it's just getting to an area where maybe it'll find some support in the 75s. But you would need crude oil to really drop sharply uh, below, it's at 77. It would have to close on a weekly basis below 73.50. Let's call it 73. And then I think absolutely. So, oh, man, it's a tough. Uh, I wouldn't go more than one to one short. There you are. Okay, I've got it. So if you are looking at the XL and you want to short it, I wouldn't be aggressively short. Or I take a small position and then you can get aggressively short. But I don't see it right now. I'm just going to say, I personally would hold off. I might change that opinion later in the week. If it actually closes under 84 in the next two days, I'll say, you know, this is acting really poorly with a market like this. Okay, got that out the way. Next question is um, WCLD. I can't remember who asked me what it is. I just wrote the letters down. Yeah, this is very nice. This is WCLD. Is wis oh, this is the wisdom tree. Wisdom tree. What? This wisdom tree looks like a financial stock. Uh, wisdom Tree. Oh, cloud computing. I didn't know that. WCLD. WCLD cloud. All right. So with that said, uh, peak A, leg B, um, monthly chart. This is from that low right there, uh, October, November of 2022. You got peak A. Oh, that is fractionally one penny, I think, higher. So this is 27.93, 27, 97. Yep, that's it. So this is peak A, peak B. There's your up. There's your arrow. This is not technical Friday, so I won't spend too much time in the notation. I'll just do this A, B, C, D. That's where you get a little cautious E, and that's where it hits the exact. I mean, I, this is this morning uh, when I was watching all this uh, stuff, um, just how things move. How important this 200 period moving average is. Look at this. He has, a, he has the weekly chart. I'll expand it out. It hasn't been at the 200 period moving average since March of 2022, when it was up in the 40s. It plummeted down to the low 20s. And here it is, touching it one more time and pulling back. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, there's a chance. Now that it's hit it once, if that MACD, which is still negative, and the stochastic tank, Stochastic only at 24%. If the stochastic can get to 28, no, it needs 29, 29 to 30% by the end of the week in the weekly chart, um, I would say 34 would be the target. That's the 200 period moving average. And this time you want to see it take it out. So the first step is 32 is resistance. Yes, I like this very much. So I can't remember who asked me. I'm going to put it down here. I like it. WCLD, it's gone from the 30, 35-ish uh, area, straight down to the 27s, and now it's trading at 30. So three points up. It's about an 11% gain so far. I like it. Now, do you get in right? If you're in it, congratulations. If you want to get in, I would try to get it closer to the 29.90, to the 200-period moving average, or I would nibble here, which is exactly what I should have said to subscribers today with one of the stocks that we wanted to get, which also kind of gapped up like that. I should have said, let's have a split position. Nibble right here, even though it's gapping up a little bit, 
and then we'll add on a pullback. That's the only way you can play these things. And once they start to take off like that, you have to have a little leeway. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And as we got a TGB, this is a, a copper stock. TGB is the sake of lines. <clears throat> you know, I think this is kind of stuck with copper. I'm surprised, but it seems kind of stuck at 125. You want to see 133 really quickly. Then that 136, 200 period moving average becomes a magnet to attract it. But it has to hold 120. I'll be back. Guys, at 130. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market you're going to need a crystal ball after all it's impossible to predict the future right like any endeavor in life before you decide it's impossible get some advice from the experts you might find that it's not so impossible after all for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. Uh, just a real quick thing. Question uh, taking uh, uh, It's one we had. I think it's going to try to target the 13, 17, 200 period moving average. That's going to be a clue to its continuing strength. Um, came down from 23 down to 8. I'd say that's quite a pullback. Um, yes, it's on the right side now says it's, it's in a buy signal to buy mode. Yep, I have to, although the stochastic's only at 61, everything else is positive. I'm going to say it's in a buy mode. 13, 13 17 would be the next uh, resistance. Um, Mandy, MDY. Uh, MDY is, I can never remember what it is. Oh, Monday.com. Uh, <clears throat> so it's trading at 171. The 200 period moving average that has been resistance for so long at 182. Looks to me it's at 171. I think that's the target in this particular move. And then you're going to have to see what happens next. Uh, well, next question came in at, uh, where did I put it? Where did I put it? Over there, there, there. 
Yes, I did have a chapter wave chin gauge, a high chin gauge reading for the second day. Yesterday it was Monday and Tuesday, and each one says within two days it should be a sharp move up in the S&P, which should help the market. That's working here as well. Um, so now I just want to do a couple of things as we're about to wrap up. We're going to go to Steve Rose. It should be a great show there. Um, let me just show you. So within the context of all these different things that we're looking at, uh, one of the aspects that we are looking at is how does it broaden out? Well, hack is acting very well for the first time. The weekly chart is trying to get back into the 56 area. It's at 55.19. That's where there'll be resistance. Um, we haven't had this for quite a while. We had this bots. Um, now it's doing quite nicely. It dropped up all the way to 22 level. Now it's at 25. This is the global uh, robotics. The hack was the cyber security. I wanted to see these things finally get, catch a light. They are, they're doing very nicely. And that to me says you're broadening things out. When you're broadening out, it means that you can take the leaders, like uh, Microsoft now is pulling back a little bit down 17. I think these other ones can 